630 a.m. on this June the 14th. I'm Wanya Reese. This Tuesday morning is looking good on you. And I'm Kaylin Hank. He knows he's got to be out and about this morning because uh, this afternoon he's going to want to be in his little hive. Exactly. Like I was telling you all earlier, I did not see any birds flying yesterday, Taylor, or any bugs because they already know what it was. I don't know. This one's a little stubborn. He's been here for the past <laughs> few days and Y'all already know I'm not going to be outside because of the heat, but bugs even worse. I, it's my reasons to stay indoors and it should be yours too. Definitely have the water if you do head outside and maybe the bug repellent. If I can get some, I would spray this camera right now. Here's a live look in Macon and it's beautiful, but it's warm. Temperatures in the low 80s to start off. So a very warm day. You're going to feel it. Humidity at 85% means the dew point temperatures are high feeling tropical outside 70s north and west of Macon 80s around the area as well 80 now in Milledgeville 80 in Gordon 78 now in Forsyth 79 in Roberta and 80 in Montezuma so a very warm morning for central Georgia but you add on dew points now trying to reach the upper 70s 77 degree dew points in Warner Robins very very uncomfortable you're going to notice it as you walk out the door that will always make us feel hotter throughout the day Temperatures today rising to the upper 90s, low 100s. And yesterday, we actually hit 100. Can we do it again this week? I'll break down the full seven day forecast. That's coming up in a few minutes. Thank you, Taylor. The inmate convicted of killing two corrections officers in 2017 now awaits sentencing. It comes after a jury found Ricky DeVos guilty on all counts, including felony and malice murder. They delivered the verdict just before seven last night. The decision came on the fifth anniversary of officers Curtis Ballou and Christopher Monica's murders. DeBose is one of two inmates now convicted of killing the officers aboard a transport bus in Putnam County. Last year, a jury found Donnie Rowe guilty on all counts. He is currently serving life in prison without the possibility of parole. A next up in DeBose's case is the sentencing phase, which is expected to start at 9 this morning. DeBose will either get the death penalty or life without the possibility of parole. This morning, two Bibb County investigators are recovering after wrecking their car when they got shot at. And now two teens face charges in the case. The shooting happened just before 3 yesterday afternoon near Thomaston and Lamar Roads in Macon. Bibb Sheriff David Davis says two investigators tried to stop a gray Dodge Charger. They believed someone tied to an aggravated assault investigation was inside. The sheriff's office says when the investigators who were in an unmarked vehicle turned on their lights and sirens, someone inside of that Dodge Charger shot at them. The investigators went off the road to avoid the gunfire and ended up hitting a light pole. That's when the Dodge Charger got away. The Bibb County Sheriff's Office sent out an update around 545 this morning. They say they arrested 18 year old Xadrian Lewis and a 16 year old boy. And both are charged with aggravated assault. Lewis also faces a firearm charge. It's now 633 on your Tuesday morning. Now to three other headlines we're following for you, starting with an update on an investigation out of Upson County. The sheriff's office says they've now found the body of a missing Thomaston man. Someone reported Stanley Steverson missing last Wednesday. Last night, investigators recovered his remains in southern Upson County off of Pleasant Grove Road. They found his body in the woods in a small creek. Investigators previously figured out that Steverson was the victim of a homicide at a home in Upson County. Law enforcement got a murder warrant for DeMonte Davis. He was supposed to surrender Sunday, but authorities say he killed himself just before that happened. The Upson County Sheriff's Office charged Davis's wife Amber with concealing a death. Yesterday, they also arrested 36 year old Christopher Green on the same charge. This morning, we hope to get more information after Bibb County investigators found a body in the woods off of Eisenhower Parkway in Macon. Coroner Leon Jones says they found the body deep in the woods behind the America's Best Value Motel, which is on Rungier Drive near Eisenhower. Jones says it appears the body had been there for a long time and they can't confirm the gender or race of the person yet. Well, this morning we're learning more about a reported weekend fight at a Macon hospital. Atrium Health Navison confirmed that the hospital was under a code lock for over an hour Saturday night. The something comes after the Bibb Sheriff's Office repeatedly stated there was no lockdown. Now, Atrium Health Navison says the facility went under a code lock starting shortly after 1030 Saturday night. They say that happened after a fight broke out within a crowd of about 35 people just outside the emergency room. The Bibb Sheriff's Office says two people got into a shoving match. Deputies say there were no guns involved. Atrium Health Navison says no fighting happened inside the hospital and there were no shots fired inside or outside. The hospital cleared the lockdown by midnight. 
In your state news, investigators believe a deadly weekend shooting outside of Grady Hospital could be connected to another one in Decatur. Atlanta police say evidence indicates the scene outside the hospital was a family dispute that originated out of DeKalb County. Two people got shot outside the emergency room at Grady Sunday night. One died. Hours earlier, authorities say a teen and another person got shot in the DeKalb County situation. The teen died. DeKalb police say they are still searching for at least three shooters. Doctors are calling out Delta Airlines over its medical bags. They say the company needs to update the kits on flights to better protect passengers. This all started when a Boston based doctor tweeted that she had to help out with a mid flight emergency and found Delta's kit was missing items like a glucometer meter and an EpiPen. Our station in Atlanta says thousands of other physicians weighed in after this tweet. 11 Alive reached out to Delta. The airline declined to say what was included in its airplane medical bags, but shared a statement saying in part, the health and safety of our customers and people remains Delta's top priority. And as such, the medical and emergency equipment on all of our aircraft go above and beyond the regulatory requirements. Today, we'll find out which organizations will get extra money to help Bibb County cut down on violence. The Community Foundation of Central Georgia says they'll hold a press conference to announce the first recipients of Macon Violence Prevention or MVP grants. The money will go to a local nonprofit and faith based organizations. It's so they can put programs or initiatives in place that will help prevent and reduce violent crime over time. The press conference will happen at one this afternoon at the Bibb Government Center on Poplar Street. You can watch it live on the MVP Facebook page. Well, tonight, people living in Bibb County's District 2 can share their thoughts on public safety. Commissioner Paul Bronson will host another town hall forum. Along with safety, there will also be conversation on public works projects like streetlights, sidewalks, and potholes. The meeting will happen at the Theranossary Park on North Macon Park Drive. It goes from 530 to 7. If you can't make it tonight, one more forum will happen next Thursday, June 23rd. That's not my fault that it's not enough room at summer school for him. Some Bibb County parents now working to get their kids another learning opportunity after results from the Georgia Milestones, but they're running into some frustration. What Bibb County schools are saying about their summer school wait list. Plus, Juneteenth is just five days away and Central Georgia is getting ready to recognize the day. The events you can be a part of in Houston and Bibb counties this weekend. The time is now 637 AM. I know there's going to be a lot going on mm -hmm. this weekend for Juneteenth across Central Georgia. And one thing that definitely will be happening still is the heat. It seems like. Oh yeah, if you were going out to some of those events, because I know they are all day, you are going yes. to be mm -hmm. hydrated. Definitely. I mean, I went to the Peach Festival this past weekend, really wasn't even as hot as it is today and through the next few days. And we were like searching for shade. Like it was wow. so hot, so humid. So definitely Gotta you need to have careful. the water and stuff. And especially if you're taking your father out, so maybe to have him grill out or something. Just make sure everybody's staying hydrated because the heat wave continues this week and we'll see maybe temperature or some models hinting at triple digits again next week. So we are really stuck in the summertime pattern, but summer really doesn't start till June 21st. So a little bit more time to go until the official start of summer, but it is coming full force in central Georgia. Here's a live look now from the Fred Roberts building in Dublin. Gorgeous sunrise. But of course, as our main anchors always say, when you have a lot of sunshine, the sunrise, it's going to be a hot day across central Georgia. Right now in the DUB, we're talking temperatures in the upper 70s. This is one of the cooler places across the area because a lot of us are still sitting in the 80s. 80 now here in Macon, 81 in Jeffersonsville, 78 now in Perry, 78 in Fort Valley, 80 in Byron, an area wide. We're seeing those upper 70s, low 80s to start off your day. So a very warm start. You'll notice it. It's also super humid. Dew point temperatures in the mid 70s only makes it feel that much hotter. Now through the rest of the day, your morning commute looks fine. Temperatures in the 80s, a lot of sunshine coming through, but notice by the noon hour, we won't have a lot of cloud cover, so a lot of sunshine will be coming through upper 90s possible for lunchtime. Then by about 5 p.m. a few showers could sneak in the area. Most of us will stay dry. Notice on this though, this future view showing us that Dublin maybe could hit triple digits once again today. In Macon, we even hit the triple digits yesterday, so it's possible we do it once again for your Tuesday. A few showers still in the area by the dinner time hour. We clear out around 11 p.m. Because of all the heat and humidity. We are underneath the heat advisory for today. That's for feels like temperatures 105 to 110 possible across not only central Georgia, but 
all up and down the peach state. So make sure to hydrate, make sure to take care of your body. And if any of those storms we do see today start to take hold of the heat of the day and get that energy going, we could see an isolated severe storm possible. Now it is also possible that the storm prediction center takes parts of the area out of this just because the rain chances have gone down for today. But across the area, our main threats are definitely going to be damaging winds and some small hail. Of course, any storm we could see lightning. So when thunder roars, just head indoors. Wednesday looks pretty similar to Tuesday except for Wednesday night. So let's take you through that. By the Wednesday morning again, mid 80s possible as you're heading to work. Lots of sunshine, upper 90s, possibly one well 100s for lunchtime. Then dinner time, things start to change. We have some rain coming through, maybe just a burst of energy for central Georgia. Could bring some storms for that time and then Wednesday night, we're going to put this up in the air, but widespread rain chances could be possible around 10 p.m. Again, small hail and anything would be possible with that. So we're in another outlook for some uh, severe weather tomorrow, damaging wind, small hail, maybe some frequent lightning possible as well. Now heading into tomorrow, the heat index or feels like temperatures will try to edge near 110, 111 tomorrow. So definitely one of those days where you will try to find the air conditioning and that will be really for the next few days because the heat wave continues across a lot of the southeast. That high pressure system in place will keep us really hot really for the next few days. So upper 90s today, 100s possible really for the next four to five days. Before cold front comes on Father's Day, that will cool us down to the mid 90s. You're welcome. <laughs>